Fever FM, the number one choice in Leeds. Doors. She's the CEO of uh, Ruth, uh, of uh, Behind Closed Doors, and she is, of course, the CEO. Uh, her name is Ruth Devani. May I welcome to you, Ruth, and um, to Fever FM. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are welcome. You are welcome. And we are talking about domestic violence today. And, uh, yeah, if you can tell us, please, okay, what is a domestic violence and uh, your organisation behind closed doors? How do you help people? So, um, domestic um, abuse um, is the term that's used now because um, we really recognise um, that um, a, a, some behaviour or a pattern of behaviour that's not just violent can really impact um, on on a person. So, you know, as well as violence and physical incidents, domestic yeah. abuse can be emotional and psychological abuse, financial abuse, controlling and coercive behaviour. Mm. Um, and for it to be domestic abuse, we recognise that the people involved are over 16, so they're not children, because that would be child abuse. Domestic abuse, we're talking about adults. Okay. Um, and it and it has to be um, inflicted by um, somebody they are uh, close to. So that's another family member, a partner or a husband or a wife um, mm. or an ex-partner um, as well. And it, behind closed doors, some of the most common types of domestic abuse we see are controlling and coercive behaviour and emotional abuse. And you know, to give you some examples of what that means, it, it might be um, it might be that we work with a woman and she's um, never been able to choose what she wears. Yes, her, her her husband um, or her boyfriend or her partner um, insists on uh, choosing her clothes and buying her clothes. Um, it might also be um, putting restrictions on who you can see and isolating that person from mm. their friends and their family. So the whole world just becomes around the perpetrator um, of domestic abuse. Um, so which there's many forms of this domestic abuse. Oh, what, absolutely. What sort of figures, uh, you know, have we got? I mean, how widespread is it? Uh, is it just oh, within just certain so communities? Or, sorry? It, it's just so worrying the level of domestic abuse. So um, around one in four women will experience domestic abuse and around one in six men will experience domestic abuse. Oh dear. Last year, we worked with um, over 600 people and um, West Yorkshire Police for Leeds took 20,000 calls into their service asking for help um, around domestic abuse. And um, and they're, they're just the incidents that we know about. Mm, Lots mm. of people will be living in an abusive relationship and not reaching out for help. They might not even recognise that it is abuse because it might not be physical, for example. It's it's a real worry. And, you know, almost all families, almost all workplaces and education settings will be affected by domestic abuse. Mm. How do people suffer? You know, I mean, obviously, if it's uh, violence, uh, you know, you see Mark or something like that. You know, you're talking about the other control emotional and all this sort of uh, thing how widespread is that and how does it affect um, a, a lady who's suffering from it yeah so um you know it might be for example your, your friend you notice that they have a new partner um and you might start to see less and less of them they might become very withdrawn if you're an employer you might start to see a dip in someone's performance mm. they um uh, start to experience signs of anxiety, depressed depression, and um, they might not be performing in work in the way that that they had been previously. You might try and make um, appointments with your friend to see them, um, go to the cinema, go out for lunch, and they're cancelling on you. Um, and and they might not be able to make choices for themselves, and you and you notice that change um, in their behaviour. Mm -hmm. And you know, does this of how how badly does it affect for to have that effect and then realize that we you know there's something wrong? Do you you know do people come out themselves eventually or? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it varies for the person experiencing domestic abuse. You know, sometimes there might be an incident um, and and you think, oh, OK, this this is not right. This is wrong. I'm, I'm going to get help. And you seek help to to move out of that relationship into a safe place. For lots of people, though, um, this is a series of incidents, a pattern of behaviour that you've lived with for a long time. Mm. You know, by the time somebody um, decides to phone the police for help, um, they could have been experiencing abuse for a number of years and something's happened where they've reached a point and that might be um, it might be that they've seen something that's made them more aware of what's happening to them it might be that they're um, worried for the other members of their family <clears throat> but um, even get into that place of safety so you reach for help um, and you move to a place of safety which might be a refuge um, it might be um, that you have to move house it might be that you get some um, order on on the the perpetrator to, to keep them away from you you've still got to then recover hmm. and at behind closed doors we provide a prevention and recovery service where we work with people who are no longer in an abusive relationship oh I see that right. But they are um, they they are still recovering from it. So, for example, they can feel very guilty if they've got children. Mm. They can feel um, that they didn't do everything they could have at the time. They can put a lot of pressure on themselves. Um, they can be very fearful of building new relationships and new support networks, and their confidence, self esteem. Um, is is just really chipped away at um, and and lots of people feel that they are to blame in some way which mm. um, of course domestic abuse is always unacceptable and the person experiencing it um, should not feel shame and should not feel um, that they're in any way where to blame. You know, um, you know Ruth I mean I've often people talk about this and they say well if somebody hasn't noticed that they've been abused for last, so many years and all that they're living in a way normal life and you know I'm sure you meet uh, people like that and after so long they realize that no that was wrong uh, is it you know within that person uh, you know how long does it take them to realize okay, that relationship is not right where we've been it, it can re it can really really vary um I, I think you know the the level of domestic abuse that I've spoken about. Um, you know, for me, and behind closed doors, we believe it's everybody's responsibility. You know, mm. in the same way that safeguarding is of children is everybody's responsibility. Um, and you know, it's it's the right thing to do to ask your friend if they are okay. Uh, you know, um, it's the right thing to do to raise awareness of what abuse is through. Uh, lots of different ways so it might be uh, training for workplaces it might be through arts and media you know through um, radio shows as, as you're doing yes. through um, you know through dramas on television and um, it's right that this is a subject that is alive and we're talking about um, and and we stand together in in this is unacceptable and and somebody needs to know what is available to them if, if they are experiencing it and it doesn't matter if they're experiencing it for the first time or very sadly if they've been experiencing it for a number of years and they want to reach out for help mm. you know it, it, behind closed doors the other the other programme of support we've got is part of the Leeds Domestic Violence Service. Um, and that's where we're working with people in the moment who've contacted the helpline um, for, for support. And, and that service is very, very much immediate, practical support, at, you know, crisis at that time. So it's housing, it's um, support around um, finances, budgeting, benefits, um, supporting families to access refuge, um, making mental health support referrals. Um, we, I mean, we do everything. You know, uh, recently we were supporting a family moving into refuge to find um, foster places for their pet dogs because the pets couldn't go into the foster home. And it's really sad for the family. But for us to be able to take that pressure away from them just took away one more barrier and they were able to concentrate and, and get to safety. Mm.